So you just got a shiny new Japanese kitchen knife. Congrats, new knife day is the best day, but it can come with a lot of questions if you're a first timer. How do I take care of this work of art? Japanese knives can rust? Will I cut my fingertips off? We're gonna answer all those today, get you comfortable so you can get the most out of your new kitchen bestie. So first off, using the knife. Pause the video, go cut something right now. You wanna bite the bullet right away. These knives aren't too nice to use or anything like that. They're functional kitchen tools that just happen to look really pretty. By just jumping in head first and getting started with your knife, you're gonna get comfortable with it right away. My buddy Owen's got a great video on, uh, you know, really in-depth knife skills, all the different things to do right and wrong. But here's the elevator pitch. Hold the knife by the blade. It gives you more control to hold it like this. Just a, a gentle pinch grip like so. With the other hand, Tuck your fingertips under, curl them under so they're not gonna get cut. Buffer the side of the blade against that first knuckle there, and then just slide the knife forwards or backwards. Knives work best by sliding. You can rock too if you're comfortable doing that. Just avoid pushing the knife straight down like this. Downward force is really hard on the edge, and the more it comes down hard on the cutting board, the faster your knife is gonna dull. I find the sliding motion also becomes a lot more comfortable because you're not bending your wrist by lifting the knife up aggressively like so. And so I just get a nice gentle rock to it. The rest is just practice. You do wanna generally avoid smashing the knife against the cutting board really aggressively uh, because that can dull the edge really quickly as well. Once you've got a bunch of food cut like this, it can be tempting to move it across the cutting board by scraping your blade like that. But that sound of the scraping is your knife being sad and getting dull much faster because you're folding the edge over. Instead, all you have to do is flip the knife over and just scrape like that. You're never gonna damage the spine of your knife. Uh, say you're chopping a bunch of herbs and you wanna do this hache cut where you rock the knife back and forth. Just avoid pushing down really aggressively and grinding the knife into the board. Again, that won't be great for the edge. Instead, just kinda let it bounce around a little bit and just rest the fingers of your other hand on top to stop that knife from flying up in the air. The other thing to avoid cutting is really hard foods that can chip your knife. Uh, bones, uh, pits, Parmesan rind sometimes. Frozen foods are especially bad because they make the steel cold and brittle. Hard things like this will chip your knife. Not can chip your knife, will chip your knife, and then you have to come get it fixed. Keep a softer Western knife handy for those jobs because it can handle them a lot better and it's not gonna complain. You also never wanna use this knife outside of the kitchen. This is the worst screwdriver, pry bar, garden tool, grout scraper, etc., that you've ever bought, and doing any of those things will damage the blade. Once you're done using your knife, you'll wanna clean it. Some Japanese knives are made of high carbon steel, which can rust, but even stainless steel knives can rust eventually. They're called stainless, not stain never. Always wash your knives by hand. Simply put a, a wet soapy sponge down on the countertop, run your blade along that sponge to wipe the blade off. Ensuring you wash it right away means there's nothing dried on there that uh, you have to get scrubbing at and run your fingers too close to the edge. Uh, and then as far as drying goes, just dry it by hand. Uh, again, towel right on the counter there, just wipe the blade off. That way your fingers are never getting near the edge and you're totally safe. You don't want to soak with these knives because it can be hard on the wooden handles and it can rust the blade. Uh, you also don't want it sloshing around in the sink with a bunch of other stuff where your hands are going to be, but you especially never want to put a good knife in the dishwasher. It'll be really bad for the steel and the edge, and your knife is going to end up rusted with a really sad looking handle afterwards. If you do have a carbon steel knife, you're in luck. This steel gets crazy sharp and is a joy to use. It also holds an edge for a really long time. And so regardless of what you need to cut, it's just beautiful. However, when you're cutting acidic foods, like this onion, uh, the juices can rust the steel a lot more quickly. What you wanna look out for is red or orange rust. Those colors mean that the steel is oxidizing in a way that's not good for it. Uh, over time, that can get right into the steel and, and pit it. And so you wanna catch it as early as possible. I keep a cloth near my station so I can just wipe the knife as soon as I'm done chopping something and then I can wash it properly later on. Uh, cooler colors like blues, grays, uh, really dark gray, even close to black, those are good colors. That's what we call a patina. Sort of like when you get a brand new leather jacket, you gotta break it in a bit. Building a patina on your knife is a process that happens just through using it. Um, but if you get those nice darker, cooler colors on your blade, it's gonna protect it from rusting. It can still rust, it's just gonna happen a lot more slowly. Again, just like rust, acidic foods can cause that to happen much more easily. So cutting a lot of onions, tomatoes, citrus with your brand new knife is gonna help that process to kind of kickstart and you're gonna build up that patina faster. Some people like to get nerdy and force patinas on their knives, but I just like to let it happen naturally. 
Check it out. In the time it took me to explain that, maybe a minute, uh, this knife is already starting to rust. If you look closely at the blade, uh, it's starting to turn kind of a brownish orange color. Again, those warm colors are not what you want. That is rust. If I let this knife sit for uh, another hour or several hours, God forbid, overnight, it would get really rusty. Uh, but don't let this make you afraid of your knife. Again, you can just wipe that blade off and that's gonna help that patina build up faster. It is gonna stain over time, uh, but it's, I think it adds to the look of the knife over time. If you do get some rust, it's really easy to deal with. Uh, you can take a kitchen sponge like this with a green scrubby side and just very carefully, gently scrub that rust away with a little bit of water. Sometimes these can be a little scratchy and you might scuff up your knife a little bit. An alternative product that I like is Barkeeper's Friend. Uh, baking soda works okay too, but this stuff is the best. Basically, you take just a little bit of that, a little bit of that powder, and with a damp sponge or cloth, you just dab a little bit of it so you get a bit of a paste going on. And then you can just scrub that oxidization right away. This will remove a patina if you build that up, um, but you can always get that back. But just a simple wipe and that knife is good as new, right? Super shiny and new. Again, no scratches on the blade. Again, you don't need to be afraid of rust. It's not gonna harm you. It's just something to be aware of if you do have a carbon steel knife. You also don't need to worry about oiling the knife or anything like that, unless it's going away for long-term storage. If it's gonna go away for several months or years, uh, especially if it's gonna have a plastic blade guard over the edge, throw a, a little bit of mineral oil over the blade or a camellia blade oil, and that's gonna protect it from rusting. But if it's just going away overnight or over a week, don't worry about it. What you cut on also makes a big difference towards the lifespan of your knife. Wood is best. It's hard enough that it's gonna stand up to the blade, but it's not gonna dull your knife too quickly. End grain is ideal where you see the rings of the tree cut in the wood, uh, because that means you're cutting with the fibers of the wood rather than against them like you do with a side grain board. These boards also tend to last a lot longer uh, and they're just beautiful. What you don't wanna cut on is your countertop or uh, a granite or glass cutting board. Uh, even bamboo is quite dense and gonna dull your knives really quickly. And those dishwasher safe uh, condensed pressed wood boards, those are also really hard on knives. So just stick to good old fashioned wood. Plastic's fine too. It can gouge up and those gouges can harbor bacteria. So make sure you sanitize them really well or grab one of our Hazagawa boards uh, because they do have some antibacterial properties. The studies show that wood uh, has some antibacterial properties as well, but just give it a good wash with soap and water and you'll be fine. When it comes time to store your knife, uh, throwing it in a drawer with all your other kitchen utensils to rattle around, not gonna be great for the edge and when you reach in there, might not be great for your hand. So if your knife is gonna live in a drawer, grab yourself a good old fashioned blade guard, just stick it onto the blade like so. That's gonna protect the knife and it's gonna protect you. Now those old fashioned countertop knife blocks are also great. Uh, you just wanna make sure you're not throwing the knife in there because you don't wanna ding the tip on the bottom of the block. Uh, and you wanna make sure you're not rubbing the blade into the wood too aggressively because that can dull your knife too. I really like these knife magnets. They beautifully display your knives. It's really easy to just grab a knife and get to work with it, but you wanna grab ones that have a wooden surface because they're gonna be better for your knives and not scratch them up. So I would stay away from the stainless steel ones. Then when you stick your knife back on the magnet, just go spine first so you don't damage the edge. While we're talking preventative maintenance, one of the best things you can get to maintain your knives is a ceramic honing rod. This guy helps keep your edge sharp longer. It looks a lot like the steel or diamond rods you see used on European knives, um, but it's a lot better for Japanese knives. You don't want to use those other rods on a Japanese knife. They can damage the edge. Think about this guy like a toothbrush for your knives. You know, you brush your teeth so you don't have to see the dentist as often. Uh, you're going to use your ceramic honing rod so you don't have to come see me to get your knife sharpened as often. Now, you don't want to use this guy like an angry British TV chef. You want to actually hold it straight up and down and just use it very gently and slowly. This guy's got an angle guide built in. So for the guard here, we've got the skinny side, that sets a 15 degree angle for Japanese knives. The thicker side sets around a 20 degree angle for non-Japanese knives. We're gonna put the edge to the rod, starting at the heel of the knife, and we're gonna put that spine right on the outside of the guard there. And then we're just gonna run it down gently like so, alternating side to side running along the whole length of the edge. Give you the side view here. One clean slice, downwards and back like so. Just like you're carving a big shawarma. One thing you wanna avoid is dropping the knife down closer to the rod as you come down to your stroke. Try to keep that angle a little wider so you're not scratching up the side of your knife. 
Uh, do that 10 or 20 times either side uh, once a week. It's tons. If you work in a restaurant, you're going to want to do it every day. Uh, and even cooking at home, if you do it after every time you use the knife, your knife's going to stay sharp as long as possible. Eventually, that rod's not going to do anything. Your knife's just going to be plain old dull. You're going to need to get it sharpened professionally. Now, knife work, the first time sharpening on any knife from us is free. That includes a repair. So if you maybe chopped a bone when you shouldn't have, or your in-laws put the knife in the dishwasher, you can get it repaired for free the first time. What you don't want to do is use a pull-through sharpener or an electric grinder or anything that isn't traditional whetstone sharpening. You can learn to do that yourself as well. We have a lot of great videos on YouTube from myself and my coworkers uh, teaching you the whole process. We sell the stones to do it at Knifeware, uh, but if you just want a professional to take care of it for you, it's super quick and easy. We even have a mail-in service within North America. Uh, if you don't live in North America, uh, chances are you can find somebody semi-locally, maybe a local chef who could sharpen them for you. If you have any more questions, leave us a comment below and we'll get back to you right away. Uh, if you want to learn some awesome knife skills, check out this video from Owen and our knife skills playlist. And if you're already considering this next knife, check out this other guy.